Welcome everyone, Costini here with a discussion about Total War Warhammer 3 and a follow-up on my video about ranged units. That video was as part of the moment thing happening in one of my campaigns as Balthazar Gelt, but I just noticed an issue with ranged units not firing and I thought, and I was pretty pissed off about it, still am really, when you end up in a situation like that, but I thought I'd go over a bit more in depth. This is a skirmish, it's a normal battle difficulty, not legendary, and I've got an entire army here as the Empire, a bunch of um, spearmen with shields, special spearmen with shields, the Electricon variants, great swords and crossbow units, all gold rank, against a fairly significant army of Chaos Warriors um, and Chosen over there. So Chaos Warriors with uh, uh, with Grey Weapons, Chaos Warriors of corn, and regular Chosen with Grey Units. Pretty strong units all around in the Chaos Warrior roster. But on my side, I have a massive choke point, a lot of range units with armor piercing. I should win this battle without too much of a thought, and quite likely I will win this battle because I do have some very strong units. However, because of the range situation, I may end up either losing the battle or taking significantly more casualties. So let's see what happens when Archeon, both Archeon and, Gil and uh, Carl Franz are on foot, I didn't want to mess with mounted units or anything like that. This is as good as it gets, by the way, with range units. You've got an open field of fire here on a relatively plain field in a choke point. Like, an army like this should win against vastly more numbers in a situation like this, regardless of experience or anything like that. Uh, it should be able to either win or inflict staggering losses on the enemy. That's how it should work. Terrain like this should matter. And it does, don't get me wrong. The choke point is going to help me a great deal. But, although we can see the, uh, the uh, amount of damage my units can do when... Uh, when the enemy is charging, like that unit of Chaos Warriors has just been deleted over there. Things are going to actually start changing for the worse. I'm just going to start spreading the damage a bit. No reason to kill a unit that's already going to start filling the battle. Just spread the damage a bit. Uh, get stand ground with Carl Franz uh, over there. Actually, just, yeah, let's do it there. And let's uh, give them all the buffs that they want and wait for the units to get in melee. Now, here's an interesting bit. Let, now, the melee lines have engaged. And I've given an order for these crossbow units to start shooting at these cast warriors with great weapons. Are they going to shoot? Well, a few models are. But as you can see, a lot of the range damage has gone down by a fairly significant amount. Now, it makes sense that when units are engaged in, me uh, in melee and ranged units are right behind them, that, you know, some of their combat power should go down. But not, like, to the point of the units not firing. And therein lies the issue. A lot of the model, like, either units are flat out not firing, even though they've been given orders, or if they are firing, they're doing so with far fewer uh, models a lot of the time and sometimes they do get the volley but what's ridiculous like literally the closer you get the worse it actually becomes uh, with the situation let's see if they manage to get a single shot off so this is the kind of behavior I'm about to lose Carl friends there because I've allowed them to get in involved the closer we get to the unit like sitting right behind here they can't shoot in that blob so uh, unless I target the unit that's a bit uh, behind. So my ranged units, which should, which are the key to winning the battle, which have enough firepower to win the battle, just flat out won't. Now, I could just move them a bit back, but a simple line formation should do wonders in this kind of situation. Or look, Archeon is there, very vulnerable. Shoot him, right? Shoot him? Nope. They're, they've uh, they've gone on strike. The crossbowmen have gone on strike. What's even worse is that once you give an order to a ranged unit like this, like all these guys have uh, have orders, and all this one is occasionally getting some shots off. Argan is right there. Look at him. No. No shots. Is that when you give an order like this? Like if you try and give an order like this. They, uh, 
they won't do anything. Like, it's not that they won't shoot the target you're intending. They won't shoot anything. Like, they're standing still. On vacation. My melee infantry are getting smashed to pieces. The units here on the flank, which are in a bit of... Uh, which are in a bit of... Uh, uh, of, a, of, an, uh, of an angle, they're getting more shots in, but even then, their combat effectiveness has gone down. Now, to a degree, I understand that it should, but I do take issue when they literally uh, don't do anything in a battle at all. And this is not the kind of situation I really should lose. In fact, I've won this battle, like this very battle. I tested winning this battle, even with this formation, when I could get them to shoot. Uh, the key is to get them uh, at a bit of an angle. Like, if you want to form a line, it's important to have something of an angle. Take out Archeon. Once you do that, you will win. Now, what's ridiculous is that although their effectiveness... Now, this is also an interesting point. Their effectiveness might... They're like half ammo. Their enemy is almost breaking through. They won't reposition, they won't shoot other things, they'll just stand still, do nothing. And then occasionally, for, because the melee lines do shift, they'll occasionally get some shots off. Very occasionally. It feels really bad, uh, to be quite honest with you. And this is, by the way, a particularly egregious example. It's actually one of the worst I've seen, uh, th this one. Like, I just did this battle before recording the video to, you know, see how it would do. And it's like, yeah, there we go. There's the range power that I've been looking for. Shooting at the angle, getting the shots off. It's because of a behavior Creative Assembly has coded, I believe, in Warhammer 3. I don't remember when. I don't keep up to date with all the balance changes that they, they've made. Because only recently have I become uh, focused on covering Total War. But uh, from my understanding, it's because of a behavior Creative Assembly did input into the game to prevent, uh, I think uh, specifically to prevent certain abusive behavior. I think the abusive behavior that they were referencing, th to my understanding, like there was a mi milk and cookies video. Uh, I might need to check that out, but I think it's like either blobbing units together or range units firing while engaged in melee. I don't necessarily think it's ne should necessarily be a problem for range units to fire while already engaged in a melee situation. Because it's like, yeah, the front lines shouldn't fire, but the back lines, like, why shouldn't they, really? So I win the battle, but basically it's like the guys who won the battle there. Um, like, when it comes down to it, it's like, yeah, the great swords did a lot of damage. Though, granted, a lot of my archer units finally did deign to actually shoot, so let me end the battle and go for the post-battle uh, battle screen. But, yeah, th those were there were a lot of uh, issues over there in terms of um, the damage done. And it is a bug. And keep in mind that this is... As ideal of a scenario on an open field as you can get. A narrow choke point funneling the enemy through like that should be... Wow! You should absolutely annihilate the enemy without them being able to stand the chance. And yet you are not really able to do so, unfortunately. So what do you do? What are your options to deal with this behavior? Now, I think the behavior is, is bad. Now, others will argue range units are too powerful, right? But this it's one thing to nerf them. It's another thing for them to refuse to work, to work. Completely. Like, literally refuse to work. There is something in the patch notes that might have to do with this behavior. I'm not sure if it's gotten worse with 2.2. I've seen this kind of behavior before 2.2. It might be particularly egregious with 2.2. Uh, but in 2.2, uh, one of the things that they wanted to limit, um, I believe, that they've done, is they had skirmisher cavalry units being engaged in melee, still being able to shoot with their weapons and being able to take down fights, like Marauder Horsemen being able to win fights that they absolutely should lose in melee. Fair enough. Again, I don't necessarily think that ranged units should uh, be prevented from firing. 
if uh, like some of their ranks should be, of course, but not all of their ranks. Like the back lines, why why can't they shoot like a giant when they're engaged in a melee fight? Like, wait, that's a big massive target. Aim up. But anyway, what options do we have? Well, I have to give credit to the YouTuber Malleus for his video on combat formations. Because he does cover things that, you know, are known either in history or as a player or both. If you've played Total War before. But one of the formations that's really good... Like, everyone, a lot of people are familiar with checkerboards, right? But one of the formations that's also really good is the Chevron formation. So what you do... And this... Uh, and he made that video specifically aimed at... Uh, gunpowder units. But it also works here. What you do is you form like several wedges you position range units behind uh, each uh, behind here and you're creating a situation right you're creating situations in which uh, you're uh, you're creating situ you're creating overlapping uh, killing fields, basically. Fields of fire, right? Oblique order, chevrons, wedges, they all work. They work very well, in point of fact. And what's gonna happen here is that these units will f uh, these units will fire just gonna uh, need to reposition them a bit these units will fire at units engaging the spearmen here these crossbows these crossbows will fire on the units engaging uh, the great swords there and wipe them out and since we're firing from an angle then the issues that do exist are just not gonna happen. I also think the AI just doesn't know how to deal with something like this. Now, there are downsides with the formation like this. Your main wedge here, or your wedges, the tip of the wedges, are going to take a significant amount of damage, especially from these kind of units. And you won't be able to get the initial burst of damage, so to speak. It might be good to actually deploy these guys like so, so they can get a bit of a, uh, of, uh, of a burst of damage and then reposition them once the enemy is about to engage. But let's see what happens here. Will I win? Well, I've already won even in a perfect situation, so should be able to win, right? Alright, Archeon is coming. And what's crucial here is, one, I've been able to get the flanking attack relatively quickly, and the units on the side, the ranged units on the side, have a great deal of effective fire. And even the units in the center are being pretty effective despite it all, in terms of doing uh, ranged uh, range damage. It's gonna send the unit there in the in the middle to help hold the middle. You might want to double reinforce the middle in this kind of situation. Lots of units, lots of damage going around. Significant amount of damage. The Empire is actually in a particular trouble spot if their range units can hit in a proper line. Because a formation like this is gonna take uh, significant damage in the units that are positioned in the middle. And the Empire doesn't necessarily have the units, especially early on, to uh, to tackle the damage that they're going to receive. They, they'll they just suffer a significant amount because of it. But what's this? My range units have used up all of their ammunition. Or some of them have. But what's important here is that, um, like, what's important with what I'm doing here is not necessarily combat effectiveness. Yes, holding a choke point should net you a better situation uh, than just letting the enemy get past said choke point. So I, I've, I've ended up taking significant damage over there. But keep in mind, in, an op in a checkpoint, yeah, you should form a line and hold the checkpoint. That makes sense.
but there's problems with that and especially with line formation obviously line formations won't work so effectively when um when the enemy is going to be able to outflank you which they will be able to do in open field battles so here they overran me and despite the more effective range damage uh, they were they're getting close uh, to to winning but in open field that uh, kind of formation would would do wonders let's say uh, against the enemy and crucially my my range units ended up expanding far more ammunition far quicker and thus they ended up doing uh, quite a lot more uh, damage the formation by the way was designed for the use of gunpowder units We can kill Archeon. There we go. And that's a victory. A bloodier victory, I admit. But, band but in the previous battle... In the previous battle... Like, these guys ended up doing... Like, the melee units ended up doing the wars. Which makes sense, because they, they didn't have a single line uh, to simply hold. But the ranged units ended up doing substantially better. It is a trade-off, and it's not necessarily one you want to make in a choke point situation, but in a field battle, in a proper field battle, you can be certain that it is a trade-off uh, wor worth making. It will also help protect your flanks uh, more effectively. I recommend you check the video that Malleus did, because it does cover uh, a lot of this kind of stuff. But yeah, range units have problems in terms of being able to get shots off, uh, even in uh, good situations, and you need to use these confirmations to make them work. The problem is, here lies the issue, though, with all of this. These are crossbows, and that's a field, open field battle. It's as an ideal situation as you'll encounter for ranged units in total war. It's not a siege, it's not, it's not um, forested terrain, it's not high elevation that messes up your firing lines or anything like that. It's a relatively open field, and they had issues doing that in the initial battle. When you start looking at siege battles, when you start looking at walled settlements, when your when your ranged units are positioned on a wall, they you might as well throw them away because the enemy will be able to scale that wall, get up there, do a lot of damage before you're able to utilize them. Legend of Total War, famously in Warhammer 2, made the point again and again that trying to defend the wall is a pointless endeavor. Far better to position your army behind the wall or at the distance and pepper the unit's range power after they've climbed the wall and taken them. That sounds ridiculous. And the attacker against AI in particular who will try and defend the wall has an enormous advantage. Yes, the wall towers might do an enormous amount of damage to your army, but that doesn't necessarily um, uh, matter because you can always destroy the wall towers and once all those wall towers are destroyed you will you can concentrate easily concentrate uh, range firepower to snipe enemy units one at a time and inflict staggering losses i've been able to win battles in wall settlements and minor settlements with relative ease even those that i should have lost but you also, because the defender has a lot of issues getting their ranged units to work deploying them getting them to fire and that's with crossbows and archers. When you start thinking about handgunner units, oh man, handgunner units in that choke point situation would have been useless, absolutely bloody useless uh, in that kind of situation to be able to get uh, anything done. Um, so a lot of issues when it comes to that. Or I played an entire campaign as the Vampire Coast, right? And much of their core roster, their melee infantry is pretty weak, so they're not really going to be able to win a lot of fights. Their monstrous units are pretty good, that's a different discussion. But mainly, I ended up playing with Noctilus, and I made powerful ranged armies, where if they could shoot, they would decimate everything in their path. But out of the siege battles and minor settlement battles, I was relying on Noctilus and his group of heroes to win the battle pretty much on their own with the support of my artillery. And it basically like felt like I could have an entire army of 20 units and only like six of them were actually doing anything. 
because even if I sent them in the settlement, um, they would just n flat out refuse to fire and just be very, very useless in a lot of situations. Or even if they fired, only a handful of the models were actually being able to fire, further reducing their combat effectiveness. Now, as they, we can talk about the range meta and how range units are too strong and too powerful and too bullshit. Fair enough. I can agree with that sentiment. But, um, but there's two problems with not having them work. One, it's frustrating as all hell to have a ranged army that just refuses to work, that works very well in certain situations, then sometimes just flat out doesn't work at all. And you end up losing a battle, not because your army is too weak or the enemy is too strong or anything like that, but rather because simply your range units did not work when you need them to. And two, there are factions that are heavily dependent on those kind of range units as the Empire in a proper open field battle because their Imperial uh, melee line, until you get to Greatswords, which are a higher tier unit, but the Imperial melee line is relatively weak. So they really do need those archers. They rely on their melee infantry to hold the line while the archers do a lot of damage. That's the situation for the Empire. You nerf their range power capability, especially in certain situations, the Empire is much worse off. Or e another example, bloody Kislev, because, yeah, Kislev mainly relies on the Kossars, right? Uh, for a lot of their early game. And the issue with range units not working does affect them in a significant way. Or range units just flat out refusing to work in certain situations does screw over a faction like Kislev, which is reliant on their range roster. Because getting armor Kossars, well, they're, they're also not necessarily that great, though they are certainly better than swordsmen and uh, spearmen with shields. So lots of issues when it comes to that. Lots of issues with the way f uh, a lot of factions were designed in the past and how things are standing right now. Uh, issues with uh, rosters of many factions. Issues with gunpowder units not working. Issues with pathfinding. For instance, in my Ica Claw campaign, and I did the uh, campaign as Ica Claw when, um, when the game, when Immortal Empires came out. And there were a lot of situations where I'd assault a settlement, right? I'd break down oaths completely, absolutely, just torn to rubble. I'd move a rattling gunner or a unit right next to the ruined wall. Clear line of sight, clear open path, and they would flat out refuse to fire. If I ordered them to fire, they would move in such a position that they would get killed in melee. Therein lies, there's a lot of really stupid behavior that you might see in these battles, right? Even in ideal scenarios, let alone scenarios that aren't so ideal, when you start thinking about barricades, when you think about wall elevation, when you think about terrain, uh, terrain elevation in battlefields, it just one issue on top of another, on top of another, breaking elements of the game. It's a lot more fun right now in the game. Like one of the reasons the warriors of chaos and vampire counts are t so very damn good in the campaign right now or why the greenskins are so good is because they're melee focused factions. I mean, granted, the greenskins have some pretty good range units, but yeah, screw range, just uh, spam nasty skulkers. You will not lose any single battle. And these issues, these ranged issues, don't just affect you as the player. This is the key element, because as a player, right, you can use different formations. You have tools, you have options available to you. But um, it also affects the AI. There's so many situations I've seen in the campaign. Like, I've seen far fewer situations where my own range units break compared to the numerous situations where the range units of the AI just flat out don't work. And I take advantage of that and win, even in situations where I should potentially lose. Now, cheesing the AI is something we've been doing in Total War for a very, very, very long time. True. But I, I feel like there's something completely wrong when it's not because of the AI decision-making. In fact, the AI decision-making may be the correct one in a lot of those cases. But it's because the units just don't work. Because the core gameplay mechanic prevents them from working. We ha we've had issues in Total War with this kind of stuff before. We've had issues where, for instance, with cavalry, right? Uh, one of the... Uh, where there was a point in Total War... 
where, uh, and I think I'll use the High Elves as an example here, where chariots were incredibly powerful. And, of course, we did have the launch of a Total War Saga Troy. What did Creative do Assembly do in response to that? Well, they nerfed uh, chariots and they nerfed the they nerfed mass effectively. Like they, they affected the mass of units in a fairly substantial way, making them far less effective. But the consequence of that change, that particular change, and it's not even fully resolved right now, but the consequence of that particular change is that cavalry in general end up being damn near useless in a lot of campaigns. And in some some ways we're still feeling the legacy of that. So people just flat out stopped using uh, cavalry. And that was a major impact for Slanish, for instance, who Slanish's entire game plan was based around the idea of like, okay, you have line holders like the Votum or others uh, with spears and or hell scourges that are just purely designed to hold the line against the enemy. And then you flank around with things like uh, demonettes and the like, right? But when you're flankers don't do their job it destroys you because you've that's your entire game plan now creative assembly has worked on that but but now they've created another issue and they were trying to prevent people abusing certain behaviors when it comes to range units and they've created a large number of problems in return now don't get me wrong you can make it work with any faction even ones that are heavily reliant on range units but it is pure nonsense and right now in the campaign Melee factions tend to do much, much better than ranged factions. Like, Warriors of Chaos aren't just dominated because they have good recruitment, upgrade of units, economy, etc., vassals. But they they dominate because they're a full melee army and range is screwed right now. They're screwed in sieges, minor settlement battles, and even open field battlefields. Melee will just do much better. Multiplayer, it's a different discussion altogether. So I will note that I've seen that I've personally experienced issues, though my multiplayer experience is far more limited. But I have experienced issues with ranged units in multiplayer as well, and it gets ridiculous. Costinier signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications, and stay tuned for more.